Lissa Productions. So one of the first filters we're going to look at in this course is the so-called low-pass filter. And from our generic filter, we've basically replaced Z1 with R and Z2 with C. And we basically measure the output voltage across the capacitor, so something like this. We can look at a couple of limits. As omega goes to zero, we go to very low frequency. This looks like it's a very large resistance, so the entire output voltage is across the capacitor. V out equals V in. It's just going to let the signal through. It's not going to do anything. That's where the term low pass comes from. If we take omega goes very large, then here this becomes essentially a wire and there's no output voltage. So V out goes to zero. So there's the idea of a low pass filter. Let's now put in Z1 equals R and Z2 equals 1 over J omega C. So there's the two impedances. We can start with the gain of this circuit. The gain is just from our voltage divider equation. It's Z2 over Z1 plus Z2, which is simply 1 over J omega C over R plus 1 over J omega C. We factor out the 1 over J omega C from both sides, and I'm going to get 1 over J omega C R plus 1. Get an expression that looks like this. And what I'm going to do is that RC combination, you may remember that from time domain analysis, that was a characteristic time. 1 over RC is defined to be a characteristic frequency. We'll write it as omega RC. So that's going to be omega over omega RC. So the gain is going to be 1 over 1 plus J omega over omega RC. There's the gain of our low pass filter. We can look a little more carefully at that. Let's look at the magnitude and the phase of that. So let's, let's step back for a second. Okay, so we start with the magnitude of this. The magnitude of the gain is just going to be the magnitude of this squared, so it's going to be basically 1 over square root of 1 plus omega squared over omega RC squared. And we can look at some limits of that now. If omega is very small, that goes to 0. We get the 1, just like we expected. If omega, goes, if omega is large, then this term wins over this, and the gain, we can be a little more precise now, goes to omega RC over omega. It falls off like 1 over omega. Something that falls off with frequency to a power of minus 1, we expect on a Bode plot to have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. And so that's what we'd expect if we looked at this on a Bode plot, which we'll do in a second. The phase, we can do the phase by, we have to turn this into a proper complex number. So gain of omega is going to be 1 minus J omega over omega RC over 1 plus omega squared over omega RC squared. We just multiply by the complex conjugate. Here's the real part, there's the imaginary part, and the tangent of the phase is going to be the imaginary part, omega over omega RC with a minus sign divided by 1. So this is, the imaginary part is negative, real part is positive, it's in the fourth quadrant. So when, as omega goes to 0, this goes to 0, but it's approaching it from the negative side. As omega goes very large, this goes to minus infinity, it goes to minus 90 degrees. So there's the gain and the phase. Let's now take a second and look at those on a Bode plot here. So we start with a Bode plot here. We'll plot it in terms of FRC, where FRC is omega RC over 2 pi. And it's on log scale, so power 1, 10, 100, 1,000 in fractions. We know for omega very small, this goes to 1, 20 dB log 10 of 1. So it comes in here 
starts out at zero on this, runs up for a while. At high frequency, we know it's falling off at like one over omega, so 20 dB per decade. When we're at the characteristic frequency, so when we're at omega RC, we're going to get omega over omega RC, that's going to be one. We're going to get one over the square root of two. That's the minus three dB point. It's the gain is one over the square root of two. So this is going to be at minus three when we're here. So it's going to roll over and drop off at 20 dB per decade. Low frequencies, it lets the signal through unattenuated. High frequencies, it's attenuating at 20 dB per decade. We can also look at the phase on the same scale. We said that goes from zero to minus 90 degrees. And characteristic frequency, when this is one, we're going to get 45 degrees or minus 45 degrees, so there. So this does something similar. It starts out at zero and then goes to 90 degrees at high frequency. So that's what the low pass filter is doing in terms of the gain, fully characterized here. Attenuation, cutting off high frequencies, letting low frequencies through. So that's what the, the low pass filter is doing. It's a function of frequency, low frequencies, letting them through unattenuated, high frequencies, attenuating them at 20 dB per decade. The last thing to look at is the input and output impedance. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. So the input and output impedance, we just remember Zn is Z1 plus Z2, which is R plus 1 over J omega C. Let me factor the R out so it's got units of resistance. So this is R1 plus 1 over J omega RC. There's the characteristic frequency. I'm going to do two things. 1 over J is minus J, so I'm going to get 1 minus J omega RC over omega times R. So there's the input impedance. As frequencies get very large, this goes to zero. It's just the resistance. As frequencies get very small, this wins and it becomes a capacitor is the input impedance. Not surprising. Output impedance, we know that as well. Z out is going to be Z1 parallel to Z2, which is going to be R over J omega C. That's the product of them over R plus 1 over J omega C. Take the 1 over J omega C out, work it through. We're going to get something that looks like R over 1 plus J omega over omega RC for the output impedance. Units are given by R. Frequency dependence is here in the denominator. High, very high frequencies. This piece wins. The imaginary part looks like the capacitor. Very low frequencies. This goes to zero. Looks like the resistor. So output impedance and input impedance, the low pass filter.